In this video, I'll go over the TADS. First, you need to power it on. So in the front seat, you need to go to the weapon page and click Util. Now, when you start up, it should already be powered on by default, but just in case, make sure these circles are filled in. And if they're not, you can click them to power it on. Now, when you start up, by default, the laser will not be powered on. So make sure you click this to turn on the laser. To control the TADS, you're going to need the manual track switch. You can bind it to a button or to axes. So to get the TADS working, what you need to do is make sure you have your screen turned on here to day or night and make sure you click TAD here. And then you need to go to your site select switch and click TADS. Now when you do that, you're going to get TADS video display on your iHads. So if you click the letter I on your keyboard, then after a couple seconds your iHads will go away. So now you can just look at the TADS display. So we can use the man track switch we binded earlier to move the TADS around. Technically, you don't need to bind it. You can just click it with the mouse, but it's easier if you just have it bound to something. So this is basically how you control the camera. You can look up, down, and left, and right. Now, the TADS can do infrared or TV. Right now, we're in infrared, but you can use this switch and flip it to TV. And the, TD, the TV display is more zoomed in, so it's better for finding things far away, but if you switch it to the FLIR display, it gives you a wider field of view. And since the FLIR is infrared and things that have heat will be glowing, that combined with the wider field of view makes the FLIR basically better for finding targets. And then once you find a target, you can switch it to TV to really narrow in on it. You can also control the zoom of the TADS with this switch here. There's wide, medium, narrow, and zoom. So even if you're using the FLIR display, you can still zoom in pretty far. Now wide, medium, and narrow are optical zooms, and Z is a digital zoom. And keep in mind, if you are in TV mode, it does not have a medium zoom. It just has wide, narrow, which are the optical zooms, and it has Z, which is the digital zoom. And by the way, the DVO position doesn't do anything. There's just FLIR and TV. Now, if you have your FLIR selected, you can adjust the level and gain of the FLIR with these switches here. If you have it in TV mode, then these switches don't do anything. You can use this switch to adjust the symbology of the display, and you can use these switches to adjust the brightness and contrast, and you can click the star to set it back to the default brightness and contrast settings. And also, you can select AZEL here, and you can adjust the TAD by clicking these buttons right here. ACM, as far as I'm aware, doesn't do anything. And when I click Filter, you can see here it says 1 FLIR, 2 FLIR, and then just back to FLIR. But it doesn't seem to do anything else. So I'm assuming that ACM and Filter just don't do anything. And then you can also click Freeze. So this will freeze the display. So even if you move the TADs around, it doesn't change. And then when you unselect Freeze, it updates the TADS to where it's actually looking. And then in the manual, it said that RF adjusts the focus, but whenever I mess with it, it doesn't seem to do anything, so I'm guessing the focus just doesn't work. Now let's go over how to slave the TADS with acquisition sources. So as you can see, there's a slave button here, and on the TADS it says fixed. So what it says here is your acquisition source. So when you click the slave button, it points the TADS at your acquisition source. So fixed just means it'll point forward. So if I click slave, it points the TADS forward, and once you have these dotted, this dotted cross here, that means it's slaved. And when I unslave it, it gets rid of the cross. So once it's, when it's slaved, you can't move it. If I move the cursor, nothing happens. But when I unslave it, then I can move it again. So you can choose your acquisition source by going to your nav page or your weapon page and just clicking acquisition here. So PHS is the pilot's helmet site. So you could have your pilot look at a target and then click slave and it'll move it to wherever the pilot's looking, and then unslave. And you can also slave it to the gunner's helmet site, so if I click slave, now when I move my head, the tads will move also. So what that could be used for is, you might want to have slave bound to a button, so you slave it to your gunner's helmet site, and then look at the target, and then unslave it, and then the tads will be pointing towards it. And then this one here that says seeker is, if you have hellfire missiles, then the tads will be slaved, uh, to the missile's seeker, basically where it's looking. And FCR has to do with the radar, but I'll go over that in a different video. And then TRN here is for terrain point. So if you go to your nav display, if you have your cursor on your nav display, and just in case you don't know, the cursor key bindings are these ones, or you could use the axis commands. And you should also have cursor enter, and it's recommended to have cursor display select, but it's not necessary. So just in case you don't know, really quickly overview on the cursor. You can move it around like this, and to switch it to the other screen, you just move it to the side and bump it, and now it's on the other screen. 
and then I can move it to the side and bump it and then it's back and then you can if you want to you can click that cursor display select button to quickly swap the cursor between screens so back to what I was going over what the terrain point is is if you click cursor acquisition what you can do is move the cursor over somewhere on the map and click enter and it puts down your terrain point and you can have one terrain point one for the co-pilot and one for the pilot and if I do cursor acquisition I can move it wherever I want so when I create one, it automatically sets it as the acquisition source. So then when I click Slave, it'll point it towards my terrain point. And the last acquisition source is, well, right now it doesn't say anything, but what that would be is if you had a waypoint, you can set that as your acquisition source. So let me actually make a waypoint real quick. I'm just going to put one right here. So now what I can do is I can click Cursor Acquisition and put my cursor over waypoint one and click Enter and it sets waypoint one as my acquisition and I click slave and it points it to waypoint one. So that was how you use slaving to acquisition sources. Now you might have noticed this number on the bottom here that says 9.2. So this is the distance or the range value for the TADs. So the most accurate way to get range is with the laser. So you're gonna wanna have LRFD second detent bound and maybe first detent too. So to use the laser first, make sure it's turned on so go to the weapon page and click util and make sure you click this to fill in the circle so the laser turns on and once the laser is on you need to have your master arm on so I'm gonna ground override and master arm and then you can click the first detent of the laser to just do a single lasing pulse and you'll see the value update here so if I do it you can see it updated and the reason it's the value here is in meters and the reason it says 500 here is because the laser is designed to range from 500 to 10,000 meters. So let me point it towards something farther away and range it and now you can see 3,500 meters away. So that was what the first detent does and for the second detent allows you to continuously range. So if I hold this with the first detent you see if I hold it down after a couple seconds it still turns itself off because it's just a single pulse. But if I hold down the second detent of the laser trigger, it lases continuously and it'll keep lasing until I turn it off. And the second, so the second detent, the first detent is just used for getting range. The second detent is used for designating a target and guiding missiles. By the way, if you're using the laser to guide a missile, you're going to have to make sure you have the right code selected. You need to have the same code for your TADs that you have for your missile. So to change the code, for the laser designator, what you do is go to the weapon page and click code. And then you can choose whatever code you want here for designating. And if you want to change one of the frequencies, like for code B, I can change the frequency. So I can click the frequency button and select B and I can change it to 2113. So 2113 and click enter. And then I can go back to code and make sure I have B selected. You can see for my LRFD, I have B selected. And if I go to C, then you can see it says C here. Now there are other ways to get range. It's just the laser is the most accurate. So another way you can get range is manually. So if you click, if you go to your weapon page and type man range, I can type in like 600 meters and click enter. And you can see when you type a manual range in, it doesn't show it in meters. It shows it in kilometers instead. So right now it's 0.6 kilometers. And you can see it has an M for manual. You can also get range based on a point, like a waypoint or your terrain point. So if I actually, I have waypoint one selected, so if I slave it, so if I slave it to a, uh, to a waypoint, you can see the range changes to 9.2 kilometers. And you can see it says N here. And if I switch to my terrain point and click slave, it still says N and 11.1. So anytime you slave the acquis anytime you slave it to a point, it gets the slant range to that point and uses that as the range source. And anytime you're slaving it to a point, it, if it says N here, that's how you know the range is coming from a point. Now, of course, you can always just override this by uh, using the laser. You can also do automatic range mode. So when you click the man range button, you can just type A in and click enter. And you can see now it says A, that is automatic ranging. So in order for that to work, you need to have your radar altimeter turned on. To do that, you can click the aircraft button and go to the flight page and click set and make sure the radar altimeter is turned on. 
And the way automatic ranging works is it measures how high you are above the ground. And based on the angle that the camera's pointing, it can figure out how far away the target is. Now keep in mind the manual says that automatic ranging only works well on flat terrain. So if you're using automatic ranging in a mountainous area, it's not going to be very accurate. Now something that's interesting is that if you use laser range and then you slave it to a point, it switches to the point range. So you can see 11.1 kilometers. But if I use manual range or auto range, so I'm just going to type auto and then slave it, it doesn't switch to the range from the waypoint. It just stays in either auto or manual. So even if I keep slaving it, it stays in either auto or manual range. And after you've used auto or manual range, even if you do a laser range, it switches to laser now, but if I click slave, it still goes back to auto or man. It doesn't use the range from the waypoint anymore. So if you were in auto and man and you want to use the range from the waypoint again, you have to reselect your waypoint. And now when I click slave, it's using the waypoint range again. Not really super important because I'm assuming most people will just use laser range, but it's just an interesting quirk that I found that some people might want to know about. So next I'll go over the image auto tracker. So when I find a target here, if you want to automatically track the target, what you can do is put your crosshairs over it and click on this switch up to IAT. And sometimes you gotta have the crosshair exactly on it. And it puts a box around it. And you can actually put it on more targets and it'll put boxes around them too. So as you can see, all the targets will have a flag and the one without the flag is your primary target. So when you have your targets marked, you can click down on the IAT switch and it'll point it towards your main target and it will follow that target. And if you want, you can move it away. And once you move it away, it won't be tracking anymore and you have to click down again to track the target. And there's also this switch right here and you can click it up and down to switch through your what is your main target. So if I click it up and down, you can see it cycles through each one to be my main target. Also, when you point it at your main target, you can see that the center point is right here, but you can also change the center point if you want. Like I could change the center point here and click up on the IAT switch again, and it moves the center point. So now when I click down, it'll be tracking right here. And also I mentioned earlier, when you click down, it moves toward your target. And if you click down again, it removes that target. And if you have multiple targets selected and if you want to delete all of them, you can hold it down and it removes all your targets. Also keep in mind that if your target moves behind a building or something while it's tracking, then it'll basically keep the camera moving for five seconds. If it finds the target again, it'll start tracking. But after five seconds, if it still doesn't see the target, it'll just drop the track. So here's an example of tracking a moving target. I would just put the cursor right over him and click on the IAT and now it is following the target and if I move it away it stops following and if I click down it goes back and starts following it again. Next I'll go over the LMC. The LMC is behind the stick so you can't really click it you just have to bind it. This is the binding for it. So when you're in normal mode when you move your cursor it moves the camera and if I bump the cursor it just moves the camera a little bit. But if I enable LMC mode, you can see these bars on the side of my crosshair, which means that LMC is on. And now when I bump my cursor, it keeps moving. And basically your cursor turns into a speed control. So if I move it left a little bit, it moves left slowly. And if I push it left even more, now it's moving left faster. So what this could be used for is if you have a moving target, you can basically set your camera to the right speed to keep it moving with the target. Now you might be wondering why not to just use the image auto tracker. Well, most of the time it is better to just use the image auto tracker, but the LMC would be used for if you can't get a track on your target for some reason, maybe it's too far away, then you're going to just have to use the LMC and set a good speed to move your camera. Next I'll go over the laser speed spot tracker. Basically, if somebody is designating a laser with a certain code and you want to find that laser, that's what the laser spot tracker is for. So the way the laser spot tracker works is you need to select a code. So you just go to the weapon page and click code. And you can see it says LRFD here. You want to change it to LST. 
and you want to select the laser spot tracker code. So this has to be the same code that the person designating the laser is using. So I'll just set it to A and you can see now LST says A here. So then you go to this switch and this controls the LST. So you can set it down to manual and in manual mode, you just can move your TADs and once it finds the laser, it'll automatically lock on. And you can also set it up to auto and in auto, it'll automatically scan for you and look for the laser. And once it finds the laser, it'll lock on. Next, I'll go over how to store target points. So on the nav page, if you click, if you click cord, you can see all your points here. And the target points are stored in the cord menu and the waypoints are stored in the waypoint menu here. So you can use the, T the TADs to create target points. What you do is you just put the TADs over the target and then you need to get a range. So the best way to do it is the laser like I showed you earlier. So I'm just gonna do a single laser pulse and once I get the range, I'm just gonna go to this button and set it to store. And you can see it's made target one right here and, and then it goes away. And if I click cord, now you can see target one. So what I'm gonna do is move my tads away and just to verify, I'm going to, whoops. What I'm gonna do is cursor acquisition target one. And let me actually, cursor acquisition target one and slave it and you can see it worked. Now by default, when you click the store button, it saves it as a target, but you can also save it as a regular waypoint, but there's a special way to do that. So what you do is click point and store, and then you have to set to waypoint. And then you can't close this menu. You have to have this menu opened while you're storing it if you wanna save it as a waypoint. Because if you have it saved as waypoint and close it, and then you click store, it'll just save it as a target point anyways. And the last thing I'll go over for the TADS is the video page. So on your MFD, you can click the video page and you can display TADS video. And then if depending on what display you have selected, the TADS video could be in the background. So on the weapon page, it shows TADS video in the background, but on the TSD, it doesn't. But if I go to the map on the TSD, and if I change the map type to stick, now I can actually see the TADS video. And I can also see TADS video in the background of the FCR page. That was the TADS for the Apache. Thanks for checking out this video, and I'll see you later.